This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. Triumph Motorcycles. Go your own way. Take charge with V-Moto Electric. And huntermotorcycles.com.au. Never conform. Welcome to another episode of On Two Wheels. Today we're down here by the Swan River on the foreshore down near Matilda Bay here in WA. Absolutely beautiful morning, absolutely gorgeous. Now with me is uh, Oggy. How you doing, Oggy? Yeah, pretty good, thanks. Now we saw you a couple of weeks ago on one of our shows. Yeah, you did. Uh, you owned um, a Hunter motorcycle. Yeah, I had a black one. Mate, this is a bit different from a Hunter. You've changed. Yeah, I have. <laughs> I've gone up a little bit more in the world. Yeah, what is it, mate? It's uh, Triumph America. Uh, it's got Bit of Speedmaster gear on as well, it's Speedmaster handlebars and Speedmaster back wheel, but the rest of it's all America. Absolutely excellent, so the Hunter has gone? The Hunter has gone, but it served a great purpose for me. Yeah, so it was an ideal thing to kick you off and get onto bikes and... Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, it was great. It's, um, in some ways I wish I still had it, but I just wanted something with a little bit more warmth and that's why I went for the Trumpy. Fantastic. Now you actually saw this down at American Cycles while you were down certainly there. certainly did. <laughs> yeah, I did. So you had your eyes on it already? Yeah, as soon as I... Was, Rocked up there on the day for the Hunter ride, um, talked to Stewie, and so I'll come back and have a talk to you about that, and yeah. as you can see, I brought it. Yeah, and, and I think your beard has grown a bit, hasn't it, mate? Yeah, I didn't have a beard before. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what happens, you see, you've, you've grown a beard and you've got a bike. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's the way to go, mate. Well, look, it's absolutely superb. It's got some great little gadgets on it as well. They've got these uh, little footrest things for, uh, for when you're... Um, uh, cruising around, yep. which is, I mean, it's an excellent condition. Someone spent a lot of money on this bike. Oh, it's a credit to the bloke that had it before me. He's really looked after it, and as you can see, he spent a lot of money on extras. And um, yeah, I reap the benefits. Yes, <laughs> well done. Well, thanks for coming down, Oggy. Thanks for bringing it down. No worries. We're going to head off to V Moto now, where we caught up with Janelle and Ray. We ventured down to East Perth, and we're here at a wonderful dealership, motorcycle dealership. It's called V Moto. And uh, this is Janelle from V-Moto Limited. You're the marketing manager, I believe. That's correct. Yes. Okay, now tell us a little bit about V-Moto. Yes, uh, V-Moto started in Perth in December 2002 and within about six months was Australia's top selling scooter. And from there we developed more models and now we do off-road, ATVs and also a vehicle called the Scarp. Yeah, we just looked at the, we got, you've got some quad bikes here as well, we've seen that. And we've got this Scarp thing, which it looks absolutely incredible. Tell me about the Scarp. Yes, well, we're actually designing a Type 2 at the moment, which mm -hmm. will be a lot more advanced, but it's um, basically capable of going anywhere. It's an off-road vehicle and a 500cc at the moment, um, yeah, that we designed from our own factory. Mm -hmm. Now, also, um, I believe V-Moto now has taken over Emax as well. Yes, that's correct. Now, this is the electric bikes. Yep, that's right. That's the our golden egg. <laughs> these things don't make a noise. They're totally silent. That's right. No fuel. Yep, absolutely. You just plug it in in your garage for a couple of hours and you're off. No petrol whatsoever. What sort of size engines, or they're not engines, are they? Yeah, they're no, motors. it's the equivalent of a 50cc, so mm -hmm. you can ride it on a car licence. Uh, fully automatic and basically how you would a 50cc petrol engine. So if you've got a car licence, you're worried about fuel, it's going through the roof, you can go and grab one of these and with your own, you don't have to go to a license centre or anything like that, you can nope, just drive it. No, on your it. regular car licence and it uses about five cents worth of electricity per week to charge. That's amazing. That's going yes. to be incredible, isn't it? Yeah. And especially for people in town, you know, if you're living in town and you're just commuting to small, short areas, it's going to be absolutely Absolutely. Perfect. And the council's actually just approved 50 motorcycle bays that are free now for motorcycle riders. That's amazing. Is yep. that here in Perth? Yes, it is. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm glad of it. We've got something right in Perth. Thank yeah. God for that. Now, tell me, what is the future for V-Moto? What are you looking at in the future? Well, the possibilities are endless. We, we own our own factory, so... Basically, we can do whatever we want. Now, so these, these actually come out of China. Yes, that's right. Um, now, I believe the company that's actually been building them has actually been building them for 20 years. Yes, that's right. Um, so, at the moment, we do order from another factory and the scarts we make ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, but in future, at some point, we'll be producing everything. That's incredible. Well, look, thank you very much. We're going to have a look around a couple of the bikes. No problem. Now, Raymond, we've seen you on the TV before with us. Yep. You are the national sales manager for yep. Yep. Now, tell us. What's actually happening? What, what, what exciting news have we got for Perth people? We, we, we're pretty excited about the new launch of the V-Moto Emax electric scooter. Um, 
for 2010. Um, we have a couple of other new models. We've got the new Breeze of 50, we've got the Cerzo 125, and we've got the Taku 150. So mm -hmm. four new models to come out as well as the new Scart. So, so are we going to get a chance to have a ride on these and review yeah, them? Yeah, yes, yeah, definitely, definitely. That'll whenever you want, just take them out and That'll see what you now, think. Now this Emacs thing. Yep. This, this to me is like a, a revolution. It's going to be amazing. This, this is going to take everyone by storm. It's just, it's an electric bike that actually works. Yeah. It doesn't sort of, you know, you, uh, it's, you've got, it's got quite a bit of get up and go. Well, a few people have tried it before. I mean, Emax is the biggest electric uh, scooter company in the world. Mm -hmm. And Vimoto um, bought them a few months ago. So uh, all the development work's been done. So, um, I mean, until you've ridden it, it's, it's hard to explain. But I rode it last Saturday and rode it right through the city. And it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Compared to a 50cc um, normal scooter, yep. motorized, uh, what's this like? It, to me, it feels it's got slight more acceleration. Um, it, I mean, this does 60, 65 kilometers, no problem. Um, the biggest thing to get used to, and you do get used to it, is the quietness. There's no noise. Mm. So, uh, but it's so smooth, it's, it's, and it's, it's good for the environment. So it's, uh, I think it's going to be the future. I think it is. I think it really is. Well, we'll get a ride on one of these and have a look. Yep. Now, um, we've noticed some other bits and pieces here, like the quads and things like that. Are you doing it here? At yeah, we, we, we're going to be the distributor for, for everything, for the SCART, which I think is going to be massive this year as well. Um, that has got four wheels. We normally deal with just two wheels. Yeah, but it's it got a 500 cc engine. It yeah, is pretty spec and and when you when you actually have a spin in it yourself, you'll you'll know where I'm coming mm -hmm. from. Yep. Now, what about uh, nationally? Yep, nationally we've got dealers in Victoria. We've got dealers in Northern Territory, um, Queensland, just every state. So mm -hmm. now, will will people have an issue? I mean, we look at Piaggio, we look at Vespa and things like that, which is predominantly made in Italy, mm -hmm. apparently, um, but. V-Moto uh, is made in China. Yep. Is, you know, quality-wise, I mean, I've looked at them, they're absolutely stunning. Yep. Uh, I mean, I've been around scooters a long time, as you know, back in Europe, mm. and uh, I mean, that's what attracted me to V-Moto was the quality. Mm. Um, I mean, it is a lot cheaper than, than some of those other names you've mentioned, but the backup's there, um, you've got good service with them, and I mean, they're very reliable. Thank you very much. No problem. Well, thanks to Ray and Janelle uh, for that quick look at V-Moto scooters. We'll go a little bit more into uh, a bit more depth into V-Moto a little bit later on. Um, but we are actually going on a ride day, aren't we, Lauren? We are at V-Moto ride day. We're riding from the city to Joondalup, which is rather a long way because I'm going to be doing it. This is your first ride, and you're going to be riding on the Emax, the yes. electric scooter. Sure am. I'm a little bit nervous because you know me riding road cars, people. No, I will protect you. We'll have a couple of I don't know, have a couple of Harleys like this beside you. Yes, now I'm very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> These are beautiful bikes, aren't they? They are gorgeous. There's I particularly few... like this one. And you're going to have a chat with a guy about this one very, very shortly. Yes, apparently, yes. Mm -hmm. So that should be interesting. Definitely. But these are great. They, these guys bought them down today to, uh, to leave them with us to let us have a play with them. They're actually, I think they're going to let you have a ride on one. Oh, no, really? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to say, gonna... that'd be a disaster. <laughs> Not going to happen. Okay, so I'm here with Caleb. Hi, Caleb. How are you going? Hey, Lauren. How are you? Uh, yeah, very good. Nice day here. Um, now, I've got your bike here. This is a Harley-Davidson uh, night train, yep. 09. The 09 night train, yep. And apparently this is the uh, last of the kind that they'll be making? The last of the night trains, yep. Yeah. Yep, no more. So, can you tell me, have you made any modifications to this bike? Uh, I've made a couple of mods. We've put um, the two into two big radius Vance and Hines pipes. We've changed the air. Yep. We've had it all um, dynoed up and whatnot. We've changed the fuel management system and just recently had a set of Andrew's cams put in there just to give it a bit more oomph. Interesting, so you've done quite a bit of work. Now my question to you is, what is this? Because <laughs> does it actually form, like, uh, is, is there a purpose for having that or is it purely the, the aesthetic? The rim, the yeah. solid rim, no that's actually standard with the 09 night train. It's purely aesthetic, it doesn't actually do anything, it just looks cool once it's polished up it looks really good. Alright, but I'm not allowed to say it looks pretty. Please don't use that word. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well thanks for joining us Caleb. I My actually pleasure. really like the look of this bike and uh, maybe one day I'll get to ride one. And now we're off to see Corey. Well cheers Lauren, thanks for that. Um, Luke, you're uh, Ben's brother. Ben's the uh, distributor for Hunter Motorcycles. Why aren't you riding a Hunter? Oh, they weren't out when I bought this. So. Is that your excuse? That's my excuse. And you're sticking to it? <laughs> okay, so what are you riding here bud? Uh, it's an 06 Street Bob. Street Bob? Okay, so uh, you done anything to it? Is it stock or...? No, it's not stock. Um, it's been chopped and raked, it's about 37 degrees. It's got a wide glide front end. Fat 21 front wheel. 
a 200 rear um, bars, paint, seat, exhaust, air cleaner, pans, everything. So you've done everything around the engine? Yep. Okay, you've got a Screaming Eagle uh, cover here, it's not a Screaming Eagle engine. No, Screaming no, Eagle cover though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it looks nice, it looks nice. So, um, how long you had it since new? No, I bought it in 07. Oh, second hand? Mm. Oh, okay, so it looks pretty good for a second hand bike. Yep. Okay, well, excellent. Um, where do you ride it? Do you go out much? And Oh, yeah, all over the place. Go down south a bit and um, mostly just stop at pubs and pubs. Yeah, righty, eh? Well, cheers, Luke. Thanks for giving us a look at the bike. We're off to see Keith, he's doing a review on the new Rocket 3. Now, in 2004, the Hinkley factory produced this amazing motorcycle. It's called the Rocket 3. Now, first of all, they produced a cruiser, which was called the Rocket 3 Classic. Then they decided to make a touring version, so they produced the Tourer. Early 2009, they thought, I know, let's change the uh, Rocket 3 Classic and turn it into a roadster. Let's make it a Street Fighter style bike. That's what they did. And with the aid of these amazing exhaust pipes, they got an extra bit of horsepower out of it and turned it into 146 horsepower. God knows why it needed more power. It's already got too much to handle as it is. The bike itself is limited to about 250 kilometers an hour, but there are ways of lifting that limiter and changing things. There's various programs available on the internet that you can actually make this even faster. God knows why you'd want to, because you have to hang on as it is. You have to have arms like a gorilla if you want to start turning the power on this thing. It's amazing. It just pulls your shoulders apart. Now, what they did was they changed the foot pegs. They moved them back so they're away from the cruiser-style foot pegs. So by moving the foot pegs back and changing the seat position, that actually lifts you up in the air a little bit and makes you sit a bit more upright. It also is a little bit higher than the old uh, Classic. So people with shorter legs you may suffer a bit but it's superbly balanced it's absolutely brilliant the other thing they've done and if you've got a bike that goes fast you want to be able to stop it so what they've done is they put ABS on the machine it does pull you up it's the weirdest thing in the world to hit the back brake and try and slide and all you get is this juddery feeling it just will not lock up so uh, it's a real real plus for a machine this size it's a must I reckon especially going into corners you've got no worries you can Hanker onto the brakes, they're not going to lock up, you have no worries. The front end of the bike looks absolutely as mean as hell. They've got the twin headlamps at the front, which really, really do set the bike off. In fact, the whole machine, the way it's built and the way it's made and coloured, it comes in two colours. You've got the metallic black, which is this one here, and you've also got a matte black version. I rather like the matte black version, it looks as mean as hell. Absolutely amazing looking machine. The other thing they've done is change the instrument cluster at the front. They've now included a gear change indicator, so you actually know what gear you're in. A lot of people say, well, you should know what gear you're in, or you shouldn't be riding a motorcycle. Well, maybe I shouldn't be riding a motorcycle, because sometimes I forget. And it's handy to see the little number down in the corner, which says fourth, third, second, or first. So you know what you're in, and you can change the gear accordingly. The bike comes with a passenger seat like this, it, do, it can be removed, and I would remove it, because really, you don't want to take a passenger on this bike, because you'll be stopping every five minutes to pick them up when you accelerate away, because they'll just be sitting on their ass on the floor. This thing has amazing acceleration. Cruising at 100, you just open the throttle, and you're instantly up to the national speed limit, which is about 110, I believe. It'll do a lot more than the speed limit on a closed circuit. Accessories for this bike, there's heaps of them. You can go on the internet, you can go to your Triumph dealer and buy Triumph um, accessories. And so you can go on the internet and there's heaps of things you can buy. A lot of people are changing the pipes. I don't really think they need changing, but if you want to change them, you can do. Um, these pipes, when you, when you throttle down from 100, the noise is absolutely outstanding. I've had people pull up beside me at the lights and say, that makes an incredible sound. And it really does. It's, you just all day, you want to get up to 100, then throttle off. Up to 100, then throttle, because the sound is absolutely outstanding. These, of course, are still made in the UK. 
um, made at the Hinkley factory in Leicestershire. So they are truly British. If you want to test ride on one of these, there's limited supplies I know at the moment, but I'm sure you can get along to your local Triumph dealer and have a go. You must get along to your dealer and try this out. For a bike that weighs 380 kilos, it's absolutely stunning, absolutely amazing. The, the center of gravity is superb. It is so, so easy to handle. Earlier on, Lauren was speaking to Kays about uh, his bike, and now he's sitting on, um, is it your brother's bike? My brother's bike. Now, what's this one, mate? It's my bro's 2010 Y-Glide. Mm -hmm. He's done a few things to it. He has, he has. He's got a nice set of uh, Screaming Eagle 211 cams. He's got the, he's had all his air changed and taken out, and a set of um, big shops by Vance and Hines. I think he's running the Screaming Eagle race tuner. Fantastic. Now, this, this takes, um, this takes obviously a few bob to do things like this to a bike. Mm -hmm. What, when you buy a base Harley Davidson, you, you basically look at it then and you think, right, I'm going to build on it. So that's what you do, is it? Basically, yeah, I think it's because of the laws. <clears throat> they have to send it out and sell them with certain pipes and certain air restrictions. So the first thing anybody really is going to do is change the pipes, change the air, get it dynoed, and then go from mm. there. And I've always said that. I've, I've, I've had a couple that I've ridden straight out of the crate, and they've been gutless. They've been terrible. But yeah. once you get to do these things to them, this totally changes the bike, doesn't it? A lot of people think the old Harley's not that fast, but um, these days, with, with all the computer and the fuel management systems, they, they'd certainly get up and go. Yeah, they've gone past that, that old-fashioned stage where they used to say oh, they were well a tractor and, and that sort of thing. Well and Mind you, at Westdale, we saw a few being used like tractors. I mean, they were <laughs> riding around the dirt and riding around the dust and the fields. Things. It was unbelievable. I've never seen anything like it. Well, thanks a lot for bringing it along. It's absolutely fantastic to see you down here. Um, now, Corey apparently has got something slightly bigger than the Rocket 3 he's going to show us now. I don't know what he's got. Well, here's one for Keith. You like your two, two litre Rocket 3. Look at this, this is a, uh, what, how many litres is this? 5.7. 5.7, that's double, double, double a Rocket 3. It's got a V8 engine. What sort of engine's in this? Chevy. Chevy. Chevy small block, crate engine. Crate engine, so just a base engine? That's it. Okay, then what sort of transmission you're running off the back of this thing? Uh, they have a two-speed semi-automatic with reverse. Uh, runs a Chevy bell housing and torque converter into their right angle drive gearbox with a belt drive to the back wheel. Right, okay, so. Pretty basic then. It is. Pretty basic, is. sort of like a just your basic Holden. That's right. By the way, this is a Boss Hoss V8 350. Um, who are you the importer for these? I am, yes. Right, this is Colin, he's the importer. Uh, where do you where do you get these from? The Boss Hoss motorcycle uh, originates from Dyersburg, Tennessee. The company's been producing bikes now for 20 years, so they, they start they formed the company back in 1990. Um, uh, the founder of the company's name is Monty Warren. Now, he, at the time, couldn't find a bike that would give him the power and exhilaration that he wanted from a motorcycle. Well, you're going to get it from this. Well, you're going to get it from this, that's <laughs> right. Now, he set about um, building a, uh, a chassis and um, out of combination of uh, an American cruiser and automotive parts at the time, uh, pulled the 350 out of his uh, stock car, threw it into the bike, uh, took it down to Daytona Bike Week and was inundated with requests where could people buy this bike. Yeah, right, so we okay. Went back home, started building the bikes and started selling. That's how the company got started. Started and started um, the ball rolling. And uh, right. in the early days they were, they, were fairly, um, they were fairly crude. They had a single speed uh, transmission uh, with a manual foot clutch. But as the years progressed they fine tuned the bike to what we have here today. Yeah, okay, so this is the base model? This is the base model, ZZ4. ZZ4, we right. We can option this up to a 6.2 litre, all alloy um, Jesus. engine from GM. Okay. There's also uh, another model, an SS Super Sport. Now that is three inches shorter and three inches lower seat height. Right, so if okay. you're a bit short in the legs or the ladies want one, we can provide them with a Boss Hoss also. So how many packets of Weet-Bix do you need before you ride this thing every morning? <laughs> no, look, all the weight is down low, so um, the only time you'll feel the weight is when you lift the bike up off the stand. Yep. The, uh, being that it's semi-automatic, you're parked on a hill at a set of lights, you just hold the brake on in first gear, when you're ready to move off, just hit the gas and away the bike goes. You don't change into uh, second gear uh, below 80 kilometres an hour. The bike, I'm told, will, um, in first gear, 
go to about 190 kilometers an hour. So you use first gear to pull it up to cruising speed and then you slip it into overdrive. Righty, eh? Uh, what sort of suspension? You're just running the Harley front end by the looks no, of no, it? No, no, this is their own front end. This is, runs upside down uh, uh, front forks. Yep. It's their own uh, rear shockies. Um, okay. Uh, runs uh, uh, 230 Avon tyres on the rear. We can also upgrade that to a 300. Yeah, right. Do you, do you get to use the sidewalls on the tyres or is it just <laughs> the centre? No, no. It's uh, The bike handles uh, unbelievably. It's uh, so easy to turn. Even with someone on the back with me, a big fella, uh, I can navigate a roundabout. Um, there's no problem at all. Okay, and, and you do all the servicing and stuff at your, your place? Yeah. Awesome set of gauges here. Um, What's, what's with them all? Is it, they're all just a basic oil temperature and revs yeah, and... Yeah. We've got a, a mixture of uh, analogue and digital gauges. We have um, uh, temperature, oil pressure, uh, tachometer, we have uh, amp meter. Uh, here we've got trip meter, which is the digital display. Your uh, speedometer goes to 230 kilometres an hour, but I've seen guys on YouTube just screw that needle straight off the clock. Joking, yeah. so yeah. it'll go over 230? It'll go over 230. You, you'd, hope, you'd hope so, like the it's top, a big engine for a little bike. Top speed is around about the 300 kilometres an hour. Okay, is the weight is it very heavy? How much does it weight? It weighs 500 kilos dry, about 1,100 pounds. 500 yeah. dry, okay. Dry. And then length? Uh, it's just shy of three metres. So it will fit in the garage or not? Oh, just about. Yeah, yeah. just about. Yeah. Okay, yeah. no worries, no worries, brilliant. And, and upgrades, what sort of upgrades do they do for this? Yes, well, we can, get, we can fit them at the factory, uh, the panniers, um, uh, top box, uh, we've got screens, as I mentioned earlier, we've got the 300 wide back tyre. Yep. Um, with the 350, we can option that up with a race cam roller rockers. That brings your standard 350 up to 385 horsepower. Um, uh, what else can we have? Um, and there's various other things. Now, when these bikes come into the country, they're unpainted. So we'll paint this bike any colour you want. Yeah, right, OK. So, so you give us a paint coat and we'll paint this bike any colour you want. Yeah, and what, you assemble them here? The bikes are pretty, pretty much, much assembled, but we have to strip them down, send them off to the paint shop, be painted. We have to comply them, do the pre-delivery, and then they should get shipped to me. OK, so uh, rough, rough ball price. I don't know everyone out there uh, thinking, how much is this? Yeah. yeah. A lot of it depends on the exchange rate of the time a client pl places an order. Yep. But um, if you factor in roughly 80, a starting price of around 80, 83,000 uh, plus on roads and various bits and pieces. Yeah, right. And as I said, it depends on the exchange rate at the time. Jeez. And turnaround time from the time you place your order is about 14 weeks. About 14 weeks. I notice a red flashing light as I'm standing here. Is that an immobiliser or a car? That's an immobiliser. The insurance okay. companies. Um, request that you uh, install an immobiliser. Yeah, OK. So, oh, yeah. But so, we take care of all that. Yeah, right. Um, gear changing? Yes. Just uh, basic on the lever, or is it...? No, you've got uh, a gear lever, a heel and toe shifter down here, just like a posty bike, if yep. you like. Um, uh, one click down uh, is first gear, second gear is another click, come back up through neutral, up, and it has also has reverse. Now, okay, so can you so engage in reverse as you're going forward? Uh, no, nice. no. The, the vehicle is stationary. We click it into reverse, and on the uh, switch block up here on the uh, left-hand handlebar, we have a button. So the engine's idling, we're in reverse gear, yep. but nothing happens until we select this button, depress this button, and that activates the solenoid in the transmission. Okay, all right. Uh, and then the bike will just idle back, so you just rest your finger on the brake to yep. control the movement and you can even accelerate up if you're going up a bit of an incline to give you a bit more power to push up a hill. Now, horsepower on this, yep. the 350 has uh, 260 kilowatts and 550 newton metres of torque. The 6.2 is 330 kilowatts and 600 newton metres of torque. Injected? Yes, the uh, 350 runs Holly throttle body injection and the 6.2 runs standard um, multi-port injection. So if you're looking to buy one of these boss hosses, uh, come down to Bellevue, to Midland Road and Trail, and he'll hook you up. Cheers, Cole. Thank you very much. Well, that was the boss hoss. What do you reckon, Corey? Big bike. Wouldn't let me ride it, though. Why wouldn't they let you ride it, mate? They said my legs weren't thick enough. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand. 5.7 litres. That's just unbelievable. It's huge. But where could you ride it, really? You could... Well... It's, it's a big bike. It I know, I know bike. where we went for a ride uh, when, when we followed him. Yep. Um, I noticed there was no mini roundabouts anywhere and he didn't have to sort of do a, a 
a hook back on himself because you'd never get it around him in your roundabout. No, no, no. And if you did, you need little trainer wheels to come out so you can actually turn it and pick it back 500 up. 500 kilos. But sitting on the bike, it was very well balanced. Yeah. It was very light in between your legs. So it was, yeah, it wasn't Amazing. too bad. But. Absolutely incredible. Well, we've got to say a big thank you to all these people that have brought these wonderful machines yeah, with definitely. them today. Yeah. They're absolutely stunning. They're a credit to their owners. They look beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I see you. Wrote... What is this, Corey? You rode in on this. This yeah. is yours. Yeah, well... It's pink. It's actually my shop bike, but anyhow... Uh, Your yeah, shop bike? Yeah, shop well, bike. Well, you go out and do business on it, do you? No, and just pick up the, uh, pick up the luncheon and things yeah. like that. Pick up spare parts. It's yeah. pink. It is, yeah. But when you've got your knees scraping around the corners, people are going, is that a girl? Is that a girl? So it is quite funny. It is. You do get a few heads turning. Oh, funny is one of the words I would have yeah, used. Yeah, yeah. So, no, nah, but exciting. Absolutely classic, mate. I couldn't yeah. believe you turned up on this. Yeah, well, I thought I'd bring it for you, but then we worked out you couldn't fit in there. My ass wouldn't fit in that. Nah, no, no way not. in the world. Well, look, thanks a lot for watching. We'll, uh, we'll see you again next week, won't we? Yeah, definitely, definitely. What are we doing next week? I have not got a clue. Excellent. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. This is a night rider, yeah? Night train. Night train. You. Call it the night rider. Night train. <laughs> I hate you.